Hey there, welcome to the Healthy Vibes Podcast. I am Kelly Renato, and today I am talking to Lindsay Wilson, who's the founder of Positive Performance Training. She is actually a master mindset and high performance coach. She works with athletes and high performers to optimize their mindset and reach their potential. She's the founder of Positive Performance, which offers cutting-edge mindset training tools and courses, and the Mindset Coach Academy. It's the first live dual certification program for aspiring mindset coaches. Everything that Lindsay does not only is great for athletes and high performers, but we can all relate to it in our life. So this is a great conversation. I'm glad you're here, and let's get started. I know you're going to enjoy this. Hey, Lindsay. Thank you so much for being here with me today and giving me your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, Kelly. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you're safe after the hurricane and everything. That's scary stuff. I know. It really can be scary stuff. It, it really is, but thank you for that. Um, so I, I your background, first of all, is is so so interesting and impressive. And I I've known is I followed you for years, but I've known that you were an athlete and I knew that you played basketball, but I have to say, do you mind telling us just a little bit about your not just your I mean, you're a mom, which I know how important that is. Um, <laughs> but your which that journey is amazing too. Um, but a little bit of about your athletic journey. Um, just what you, uh, your years of where you were in college and professional. Yeah. Well, and knowing your um, audience, I'll talk a little bit about, um, that and also sort of how my parents played into that, but I was very serious about sports. I had two older brothers and, um, I'll start with, with what happened. I ended up playing professional, professional basketball. Um, but really where it started was like a lot of kids just dinking around with my brothers and playing in our front yard. And then around 12 years old, I, I started getting really serious about sports and, and I loved basketball and I loved hoops. And I remember seeing the 96, basically it was the women's dream team. And I saw them practice. We were down in Colorado Springs, I think for a tournament or something. And, um, and I said, that's what I want to do. And so I got really serious about training and I started working with a strength coach. I mean, this was in 1994. I mean, strength coaching or strength lifting, you know, strength training, I should say, was not like something everybody did, certainly not at 12 or 13 years old. And my dad had been a college football player, so he knew a little bit and help, started helping me. And interestingly enough, my mom was sort of just like, it was kind of nice, I have to say. My mom was like, she got more interested later, but you know, she grew up pre title nine, like she didn't have any opportunities. So she was like, cool, like, have fun, <laughs> you know, right. and, and my dad was a little bit more serious. And he was the one getting up with me at 530 in the morning. And so I had a really good balance with that. I had one parent that was like, you know, VHSing my games and taking driving me all over the city. And then one that was like, yeah, cool, just be a good person, you know. Um, and but I got more and more serious. And then I started getting recruited but right before I got recruited, I was working really, really hard. Like I said, I was up in the morning. I was staying late after practice. Like I was that kid and it wasn't coming together for me. I, I was, when I played, I was playing scared or hesitant or I just, I knew I was holding myself back. And this is, this is really fast forward why I do what I do because of that girl, right? Which is how a lot of us right. start our businesses. Right. And, and I was really at a, at a fork in the road. You know, I was like, okay, I'm either going to pull back and sort of go to safety and just self-sabotage, really. I didn't have that language at that time, but that's basically what it was. And, or I'm going to figure this out. And actually it was my mom who, you know, was the one who, you know, quote unquote, was sort of on the sidelines, just clapping, found me a mindset coach. And um, really everything shifted very quickly after I found that person. Um, within a couple months, I was playing differently. I was getting recruited and I went on and played at, at Iowa State University and had a great career there. A lot of team success, a lot of individual success, uh, got drafted in the WNBA, ended up getting cut uh, multiple times um, and went overseas and played and had a great career. Um, I played until I was 30 and then wow. awesome. um, I'd already started my mindset coaching business. So basically finished playing and came home and did start doing this full time. So that's that in a nutshell. Well, that, and that answers my next question, my next question about where was that shift? So were you open to the mindset coach at that age? Very much. Yeah. I I was so driven and I knew that that was the, the barrier for me. I had been introduced. I was trained by, um, a guy named Peter Schmock who 
was actually trained by Bill Bowerman, who I don't know how many people, I mean, people obviously know he founded Nike, but from a coaching standpoint, he was doing stuff in the seventies, you know, well before any of us were talking about any of this stuff where Peter had learned from him visualization and mindfulness. And so I actually got a little bit introduced to that at a really young age, like 12 or 13, you know, kind of like after practice relaxation exercises. And so he kind of planted the seed. And then I started working with a coach seriously when I was 16. And um, yeah, I, I knew I knew that that's what I needed. So I was very open to it. And did you have that coach for the rest of your career? Yeah. Or Yeah. Wow. That's it. That's that's really impressive. I feel like because I that at that age you were necessarily open to it, and I can from everything I get from you, I can see how driven you are, and it's super inspiring. Um, <laughs> but and I and I, it, it's a big with athletes to me. But even even just in our everyone's journey, the mindset it's amazing, and I think even with like so many of the athletes today, the teenagers, high schooler, which is what I'm around mostly. And I do know some in college as well of, of where they, where they even started that. And, and with you, it was a, a pivotal point and you had someone in your life that I think helped guide you and not all kids do, sure. but where, besides, would it just be a mindset, mindset coach that you would tell them to start from, or how do you start if someone says There's I need to work on my mind? Yeah. It's overwhelming. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I mean, there's so many resources right now. I think that it's kind of almost hard to know where to start versus like where, when I was, it was like, wait, you're working with who? Like, I don't even know what that is kind of thing. And it, it wasn't until, you know, I started my business, uh, like 18 years ago. Um, and th- it was very much like explaining people what this was or what I was doing. Um, and now it's, you know, I think there's a lot of places you can start. I think it kind of depends on the, the issue. I think for from a parent standpoint, if you have a kid that's dedicated and um, and open to it, as you said, that is a very important piece. And you have the resources. I think having a mindset coach is really, really great if you if you can swing it. Um, that being said, there's lower cost options. Like we have online courses. There's free options. And on the free side, I would say, you know, things like, or uh, free slash low cost, things like starting with some breathing exercises. Um, We have a course that helps people with pre-competition routines. You know, everybody thinks they're so unique in their struggles and we all are struggling with the exact same things. It doesn't matter if you're an athlete, if you're a mom, if you're speaking on stage, if you're in sales, if you're trying to get a job, it's all the same stuff. Like performance anxiety, uh, imposter syndrome, lack of confidence, you know, playing small in your life. It's all the same stuff. Um, so I think there, there's simple things to start with, which is like breathing exercises, visualization exercises, meditation, anything like that, I think is a good way to start depending on how old they are. But, um, you know, there's lots of modifications like uh, little kids can learn how to breathe. My, my daughter learns stuff in school and teaches it to me, you know, um, and you might have to word it differently and introduce it differently and that kind of thing. But right. um, there's a lot of simple things. And I think sometimes people try to, as I say, you know, like boil the ocean kind of thing. Right. And there's definitely a time to go full bore, spend money, get somebody, not mess around, get somebody who knows what they're doing and like solve the problem, which is where I was at as an athlete. Right. I think there's also times and sometimes you have to wait for that, to be honest, for someone to be motivated enough to do the work. Um but there's other things that I think you can implement that are more simple and, and, and hopefully that's what a lot of what we do with our coaches too, is like, do you have a pre-practice routine? Do you have a way to, for athletes to reset when they make a mistake in the middle of competition? Do you have a post-competition routine? That's our whole, one of our whole courses is just that stuff. It's called the psychology of competition because nobody teaches this stuff, right? And it's really simple stuff. It's not difficult, but when you don't understand that nervousness is a part of peak performance. You think there's something wrong with you. You get more nervous. And the story you tell yourself is I'm not ready. And I know moms listening to this have seen this in their kids if they're playing at a high level or even not a high level because fear is all perception. Um, And so things like that can be really, and so that's why we try, try to teach coaches this. It's like, this isn't, you don't have to have your doctor in sports psychology. You don't even have to get certified from us necessarily. Like implement a pre-practice routine. Boom. That it will change how your athletes approach the mindset piece of it. 
so so much good in everything you said and i feel like i could ask you several questions after this let me start with with first i just want to say first of all though you you provide so much good free information and i print like your downloads i've had on my refrigerator <laughs> many times and on my bulletin board um i love the cheat sheet that you have for coaches the seven yeah. ways to develop your the tough resilient athletes yeah um your podcast, like you, you give a lot of good information and then you go to the next level of your courses, which you just brought up a few. And I, I wanted to ask you about, I'm pretty sure what you were talking about is the, the braver method. Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah. The braver is a pre practice. Yep. It's, can you, bra it's braver without an E, the acronym. Brave, yes. So yes. can you give a little bit of a summary of, you kind of, I think touched on it, but a summary of what they get with that? Cause I think that sounds like such a great routine for yeah, athletes. Yeah, actually, you know, I was just uh, talking to my mom who ran into like a friend of ours and I, and he, his, his son was getting really serious about, I think it was jujitsu a couple years ago. And he actually started doing the braver with his kid before bed. And he was just talking to my mom the other day and it was so, so fun to hear. It's always nice to get feedback. And he was just like, that exercise helped his son so much with nervousness. And um, yeah, it's a really simple exercise. Um, the bra the B starts for, stands for breathing. And then we have a, um, a way that they learn how to release. So just like releasing anything during that breath. Um, the A is affirmations. So we teach how to make correct, how to create correct affirmations. There's a whole little workshop in that, how to visualize and then a reset word. And the reset word is then how they reset in the middle of competition, uh, after a mistake. And so it's this, it, it's really simple, and it, but it encompasses all these different things, like being able to take deep breaths and really connect to your body on a, on a subconscious deep level, the ability to, to visualize your goals, the ability to have this tool that you can use in the middle of competition. Because one of the things for parents is sitting there watching your kid make a mistake and knowing that it's going to turn into two mistakes or three mistakes mm -hmm. or four mistakes, and they're not going to be able to recover. Because nobody teaches this stuff. Nope. We're just expect our kids at 12 years old to be embarrassed in front of everybody and recover. Which, um, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. I no, no, go this. ahead. So with what you're just saying, which first of all, that myth that I love every bit of that. And that, that translates to the life of a mom, <laughs> the life yeah. of a person in a big business, all yeah. of those, it's, it always goes back to simple things. And I think sometimes we're so like, wrapped up in this busy, crazy world, we can't even slow down to think of, to do the simple things. Um, but back to what you said about kids, because I will say I've been watching my kid, both of my kids play for over 10 years. I have a junior in high school and a eighth grader that'll be in high school next year. And so I feel like Ed watching their friends on and all parents are different, but I've watched <laughs> over the years so much in terms of coaches, parents, and kids out there on the field. And with the mistakes, like that to me is, is a huge one. And so mm -hmm. if you were going to go to a, say a high school team and talk to them about the, the two things I see a lot of is, is confidence. Mm -hmm. You can see it on the field and then the bouncing back from mistakes. Yeah. Like, are there a few simple, I, I, I feel like it's your braver method. <laughs> some of those yeah. things you just said, but that you would tell that team. To help uh, them. When I go and work with the team, I say the braver, a pre-practice mental warm up. Uh, that pays dividends. It does, it does multiple things. It teaches them that the mindset piece is important, that it's trainable, um, that they can connect this practice and this moment with a larger goal and start seeing it and, and training their brain on a subconscious level to go get that affirmation. So I think that's that in itself is really, really powerful. We also have something called uh, mistake ritual magic, which is that re reset word is connected to the mistake ritual. And that's a little mini course. So I would implement that. Um, and all of these are like, we have scripts and workshops and like, we break down how to teach it. Right. So these are like, sit down with your team for an hour. Everybody chooses a reset word, a mistake ritual, and then you practice it and practice. So my whole thing is like, like you said, how do we keep it really, really simple? How do we create things that are repeatable and easy to implement during practice? So my ideal would be a team sits and does the braver, you know, maybe as they're stretching, even the coach teaches it, does a script maybe, and then they are off to the races and do it themselves. And then during practice, depending on your sport, water breaks, uh, in between drills, um, in between sets, 
um, that they're doing this mistake ritual or reset ritual where they're, which they've created and they have buy-in and it may, it usually includes something very simple, like taking a deep breath, saying a word, maybe doing a hand gesture. And we have a whole repeatable process where they're practicing this stuff regularly. And when you implement it as an individual, it's important when you end of it, when you do it as a team and as a culture, it starts to become this thing that people understand this is important. They understand it's okay to struggle with this stuff because everybody does. And it really becomes in the same way stretching is just, that's just what you do as an athlete. Um, and so it takes, I don't want to say the stigma of mental illness and all that, but it takes a little bit of that feeling of being alone in these struggles, or I should just have this figured out or whatever the story is that they're telling themselves. I'm the only one that gets nervous. I shouldn't feel nervous. Any of those things that are just stories they tell themselves. So when we exactly. actively you know, counteract that, it, it has really ripple effects for a, 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 a small amount of money and a small amount of time investment, I would say. Absolutely. So, so I guess, um, how, how do you, and, and some coaches I think are openly on board with this stuff. Yeah. Um, what if you have a coach you feel like maybe is not open to this stuff? Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if my answer is, is, is quite like what people want to hear, but I don't, I don't worry about those people. <laughs> I gotcha. just, do you know what I mean? Like I, it's, for, and that's more, maybe more on a business standpoint, you know, I'd probably feel differently if it was my kid that, that whose coach so was in, that's into what it. I would say, and I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I think, I think there's, there's, it's really hard, uh, I would say, if people are not into this stuff, you know, I, I just don't know that that's like uh, a mountain you want to climb. I think it's more about what is the story your kid is telling themselves about it. Like, like say you have an a-hole coach that's like, you know, the old school, like yelling at kids. You know, I mean, there's obviously you can remove your kid from that situation, depending on if it's abusive or not. But I think the larger thing is like, what's the story you're telling yourself? How are you framing it? And how are they framing it in the sense of like, you're not always going to have a coach or a boss or a teacher that is great. That's just not life, you know, and and what can you do? I had plenty of coaches that I either didn't like or didn't buy into this stuff or you know, I, I mean, I feel like I was always coachable, but like, I just didn't see eye to eye on maybe. Um, right. and what, and that message of like, well, what can I do? How can I can control what I can control? And I think that is a really good message too, because I, it's sort of like that idea of like, you can, you know, you can try to pave the, the path in front of you, or you can put on shoes, um, to protect yourself. And I think that's always good is just that message of like, well, what can I can control? I control my reaction. I control my mindset. I can control how I approach competition. Uh, everything Absolutely. else is really out of my control. I like that. And what about to the parents? Like how, what, what advice would you give to parents as, um, to help like take the coach out of it, but to help their kid in terms of their confidence or, cause I, I do feel like it, that's such a big part of kids, um, you know, what they're getting from whoever they ride home with or whoever they are talking to after the game that was not their best game or trying to turn that corner. Like I look at what you said and with your story, like you had two parents. I feel like I did too. I feel like my husband and I try to be those parents, but what about what, what advice could you give to parents to help their kids? Well, you know, uh, again, I, I feel like sometimes I have like untraditional, non-traditional uh, responses, but uh, um, it's the same message that I give to coaches, which is we first have to work on ourselves. We first have to hold the mirror up. So if something is triggering you or something is bothering you or about your kid or your athletes or the people that you lead, it's often a reflection of something that we're struggling with or something that we're not modeling. It's not to point fingers, but it just, it seems like that is often the first thing that we need to sort of shore up. It doesn't mean that it has to happen in a vacuum. You can also do other things with, you know, your kids. Um, but I would say that's the first thing. That's why so much of our training is really focused on the coaches and the leaders. Um, because whatever you're modeling, whatever you are feeling, you're projecting out and we also have to walk the walk. So if, you know, and it doesn't mean we have to do it perfectly. Like I, 
my kids remind me to take deep breaths and I teach this stuff, you know? So mm-hmm. it's not that we have to model it perfectly, but if we're not working on ourselves, we cannot walk the walk. We cannot preach in an authentic way to anybody else about working on their mindset if we're not doing it ourselves. Absolutely. I really, really believe in that. I believe in that too. And I, and I love that you said that because I, I know in so much of the messages I get from you, whether it's your emails, podcasts, I've heard you say it many times um, about self-care and modeling it yourself. So I'm just curious. It's a little bit of a turn, but with your um, new baby, and I know you have a couple girls too, right? Four. Do you have all four girls? Wow. Yeah. Um, how fun. It's so how fun you- and so hard. <laughs> I bet. What are their age Every ranges? Things are, right? Uh, yes. What what age ranges do you have? I have four under seven. Four under seven. Seven so and under, I should say. Yeah. So can you give us a little bit of your, how do you keep your own self-care and how do you, how are you juggling that and still taking care of yourself to take, to be that model and still have your business? Yeah, it's definitely challenging. I mean, I think, um, you know, there's, there's just a lot of, um, I I just, I try to check in with myself and when I'm getting overwhelmed with them or if my husband and I are fighting or whatever it is, like, you know, again, I try to modify their behavior or modify my husband's behavior or (laughs) whatever it is, right. That like, is such a natural response and, um, and coming back to what do I need? And that is such a hard thing, I think, especially for a mom, um, and so just trying to prioritize that, I, I don't know that I have something specific. I mean, for me, I know what I need. I, I generally need like exercise and I will like choose that over showering or really almost anything else, you know, and those are like kind of the trade-offs that I have to, to make. I think setting aside sometime, like I was laughing with a friend the other day, like, I think the key to parenting is and parenting, and I should say running a business is having really low expectations, Mm -hmm. um, which sounds very counter to so much of what I teach, but it is like a mindset thing, right? So like I work, I'm just coming off maternity leave. I have a uh, almost three month old, so I'm not really in like full mode right now, but I have set times that I work and then I don't expect to get anything else done on those other days. Um, if I do cool, and so I have these sort of like chunks of time. And this is a lot of what I teach so many of my students too, is like time blocking, um, different techniques for time management. I really believe we're kind of getting on a tangent here, but I believe time and productivity is very much a mindset issue. When we start getting overwhelmed, when we start feeling like we're not doing enough, we're not being enough, that pushing really affects our productivity. And so I try to balance that. Um and, you know, not everybody can do that. So that's also a huge privilege. And technically I'm on maternity leave right now. So, um, that Which helps. I appreciate it's, you know, giving us this time on maternity oh, leave. Yeah, no, it's great. And I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying just starting to work again. I also have a ton of help. Um, and we need every bit of it with four. Um, and yeah, I don't know what the original question. Oh, and then, yeah, just trying to get back to looking at myself and working on myself. And that is, you know, it, it tends to be down the priority list, right? I mean, I had four sick kids the last couple of days. So it's like yeah. self-care was out the window, you know, right. and just trying to get like a little bit in to like not lose my mind is um, pretty good. But I, I, I implement a lot of those, the techniques, like, you know, deep breaths, trying to reframe stuff. I think, um, you know, we do different um, techniques around like regret which is kind of like a mistake ritual, really. Like I yelled at my daughter last night and then I felt super guilty, you know? And like, how do you recover from things like that? Because those can really like drag you down the the whole rest of the day, you know? And so little, little techniques like that, that I, that I forget, like all of us, I forget in the moment I forget and I spiral and then I remember them, you know? And so, um, I think it's, it's all a dance. It's all a journey. And some days I feel like I have it figured out. And other days I'm like, I don't know why I teach this stuff. Cause I totally suck at it. You know, <laughs> I mean, I think that's just true for all of us. That's true for all of us. Absolutely. And I think you, you gave a lot of good advice there as in terms of a mom, cause it is every day is different. Some days we're doing good. Some days we're falling off, but we bounce back and we forgive ourselves. And I, I feel like I've grown and learned so much through my kids, but being willing to be open 
to knowing that I mess up and learning from it. But yeah. low expectations, I'm with you. I feel like in parts <laughs> of our life, yes, I push my kids, but then the, you're right. You you can't, ex- if the higher they are, sometimes we fall even harder in terms of the day-to-day grind of life, especially with motherhood, I think as well, because there is only so much we can control. <laughs> we, yeah, we can't I, control no, it all. No, and I think a lot of us get into, I don't think I'm a particularly unselfish person, to be perfectly frank. I'm, I'm very driven. I'm very into like my career. I'm very into like pushing myself. And yet as a mom, I can fall into like the martyrdom like so easily. Like it is like based on my personality, you think that I wouldn't. And yet I can sacrifice and martyr myself till the cows come home and not take care of myself at all. And it comes back to bite you, you know, so like coming back to, and, and my marriage too. Like, how do I, how do I, I was actually my best friend the other day. I was like, I don't know what I do for fun besides working out. So I need to figure that out. And you know, my husband and I do date nights, but like, what can we do that like nurtures us? And that's all good for our kids. You know, absolutely. And, and I, have to remind, I know all this stuff and I have to remind myself. Well, and, and it's good that you do remind yourself. I feel like that's, I think we all have to do that reminding of ourselves of no matter how much we know and, and what we teach every day. Um, which, so I, and I have to say like so much of, I keep going back to the messages you, you send, but just getting on your email list, I think is so good for for many people, you do send out a lot of good stuff. And I think recently, I don't know when it was, but you sent out one on confidence, which I thought, um, and, or maybe it's on your, I'm not sure now, but, and you gave like three things with, in order to have confidence, um, practicing bravery, confronting challenges and positive relationships with failure. Yeah. And I, I thought it was, I say simple. It's, it can be simple, but not easy. But I thought they were such good things for not only high school athletes, but us as moms as well Mm -hmm. to know that, as you said, in the same post, I think that, um, you're not necessarily born with confidence. Yeah. Um, these are things that every situation we approach, um, and, with, with athletes, but with moms, I feel like with what we were just talking about, we too can practice bravery. Yeah. Um, challenges like you just said every day, but that positive relationship with failure. And that's kind of what you, you touched on as well when we were just talking and, and how do you teach athletes to have that positive relationship with failure? Because most sports, And that's what I love mostly about sports is that it mirrors life, Mm -hmm. but failure, not only it's there every single game, almost every single, you know, practice, like you're feeling it, but how do you, how do you coach that? Do you have something to, um, so I think when you're talking about failure, it's, it's often not, well, one, I, we, we have that ritual that, that helps sort of clear it. Right. Um, I think so much of what I teach, you know, and this is for my, you know, athletes, this is for my students. This is for, in in my monthly coaching, um, in my certification, my certified students that are built, you know, adults building businesses. A lot of them are moms. Um, and we talk about the story that we tell ourselves about the failure, right? So like, often it's not the failure itself that's going to do anything. It's the story on top of it. So if we, you know, have a turnover in a game or, you know, have an error or mess up in front of everybody, it's often not that thing that happened. It's the story then that we tell ourselves on top of it. So we're saying, well, my coach is going to pull me out of the game or the scouts are walking or my teammates don't trust me anymore. Or, and, and so having a, a, But it's in the moment having something that helps you put those thoughts aside instead of what I call getting on the negative train. Um, And the same happens with my coaches that are my certified coaches that are learning how to sell, right? They hear a no or they have a launch that fails or, you know, they do something that that doesn't work out. It's often it's it's usually not right. This is our, our lizard brain coming up and trying to keep us safe and saying, no, 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 no. Don't do that scary thing. When you fail, it's it's a threat to our survival. 
and that gets activated. And that is a very natural part of, of how our brain works, right? So much of what I teach is like, there's no getting around it. This is how our brain works for now. Right. Right? Right. So you're not unique in this response. And yet the story we tell ourselves is that this matters more than we think it does. Like for most of us, it doesn't mean we're not going to eat tonight. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have a shelter tonight, right? It doesn't have any real ramifications often, not always, but often. And so the story often is worse than the actual failure. And sometimes just having that awareness, because what we do is we do that preemptively too. We just did this in our monthly coaching program. Um, which is another thing your moms might want to look at is we once a month we have a theme and we work on this thing. You have mindset workouts and we have a live coaching call, but we worked on, we often do this preemptively to avoid this feeling, right? So we play small. We go, don't start the business. We don't call the person. We don't do the, we don't volunteer for the, the public speaking because we want to avoid that situation where we are going to feel that way. But if that way that we're feeling is a lie, then what are we avoiding, right? We're just playing small to play small. Whereas if we recognize that we are doing that, then we stop avoiding these things. Then we grow, then we challenge ourselves. And yes, we're going to stumble and we're going to mess up and it's going to be public and it's still going to hurt, but we don't have to make it mean everything. So that's telling telling yourself, and I'm saying it simply, but creating a new story, like, like, Try avoiding the negative train, like you said, and having a story, like being aware of it and having a new story to tell yourself. Yeah. And I think you can also look back on things that you've done in your life that you failed at and recognize how much you grew and, and realizing that this is a part of success. And all of this sounds like almost Captain Obvious stuff, right? Like, you know, it sounds like a bumper sticker, right? Like you're going to mess, you know, whatever, shoot for the moon. If you miss, you'll land among the stars. Like it all sounds kind of corny when you say it out loud. <laughs> And yet our brain really buys into that stuff of like, we need to keep safe. Like, don't venture outside the cave. Like, don't go do something all risky. And yet so many of us are craving that risk, right? Like we want challenges. And I see this with moms, you know, whether you're working or not working or trying to balance, like having kids and and let's face it, it is not easy to have kids and have a career. And so many women, I think maybe even more than men are like craving those risky things to mm-hmm. some degree. And, and it's a really important part of growth. And it's a really part, important part of success. We are not going to get to whatever level we want to get to without falling on our face. It doesn't happen. Right. It doesn't happen. So, so go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just, that, that's it. <laughs> so, well, so yeah. And, and, and I like how you relate it to mom. So let me be, go back to the athlete. And I, I think it would be similar for moms because if you have athletes and um, like everything you said is so good, but you send, and I'm going to go back to the high school athlete, but, but, but really it could be the, the little athlete in little league too. Um, you're, you're telling them this as a parent and you're sending them out. And what if they're continually, just like moms do, getting the negative messages from somewhere about their mistakes? Like we're telling them, you know, redo the story. You're still going to eat tonight. It's fine. And I guess you just keep doing that, even though the coach or say the mom that you're saying she might, it could be her spouse or a friend or whoever giving her that you can't do that. Or, you know, do you just keep pushing or do you have another? Well, this is what I think about that. I I don't actually think you tell them all that because that doesn't make any sense to a a teenager, right? They're they're like, of course, I'm going to eat tonight. That that's not, they're not going to make that connection that their brain is worried about that because that has never been a worry in their life, hopefully. Right. (laughs) So I think it's more about, I, I would say that you say that to yourself, but I think for a kid it's more, and this is where I think working on yourself is really important. Are they seeing you make mistakes? Are they seeing you take risks? Are they seeing you be scared, right? And I think that's really, really important. But I think also, and I did this, uh, I think on my Instagram last week, I don't, I don't know if, if you saw it, but um, I think the messages are really about celebrating. This is what I talked to about coaches, about like the culture, and you can't control the culture of your, your kid's team, but you can talk about the culture of your family, which is 
we celebrate effort. We celebrate progress. We celebrate doing scary things. We even celebrate failing because those are the moments that we grow. And so last week, my daughter, but we have to be consistent in this, right? So my daughter, um, in, in my family, even with my kids that are seven and under, when we go to practice or play a sport or do anything, there are two rules and they know these. It is play hard, play hard and have fun. Those are the same things together. And last week, my daughter um, scored two goals in her soccer game. And and last year, it was like hard to get her off the sideline kind of thing. So this was like a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. And she went for it. And so she was really excited. And I, I tell her that I'm proud of her, but I say, why am I, why is mommy proud of you? And she goes, cause I played hard. And I go, is it cause you scored goals? Like, that's fun. Is it because you scored goals? No, it's cause I played hard. And so making sure, and you know, I'm not a perfect parent. I'm not here saying that I do this all right all the time, but this is the kind of thing that builds that belief that what is the most important is not the result. It's not the messing up. It's not the goals. It's not the blown opportunity. That is not the point. The point is to grow, play hard, have fun in the process. And so being consistent in what we're praising and helping them be proud of themselves for effort and trying and doing scary things um, is always the most important. And that's what I talk to coaches about a lot. You know, if you want a culture of people that are brave, we have to create safety for them to feel like they can be brave without these, you know, huge ramifications. And when they do stumble that we're there saying, this is part of it. It's okay. Good, good for you for trying. Um, so that's what I would say. It's not like a quick fix, but that's the message. That was great though. That was, that message was wonderful. I loved every bit of what you just said. And I have to say, um, I can't say that that was ever the rules of my kids, but those are the two things I said to my kids every time they would leave for like a game or practice. Well, they were getting it. Play hard and have fun. There you go. I love that. And I do love the other of the, the safety and of what you said as well with coaches, because that's what I've always told my kids and they've each at some point. And, and I love that they've had coaches that were not necessarily, um, good culture and positive. Cause I think you learn from that as well. Like you said, totally. life is not fair, yep. but I also love that they've each had coaches, um, that have given exactly what you said. Listen, I don't care if you miss the ball, but I better see you like go after the ball, <laughs> like yeah. just play hard yeah. and that's it. And that's, yep. that's when kids like play hard. I feel like when they have that. So that, yeah. and that's a great message to us moms as well, which, I wrote down one time um, and I've saved it. It was in one of your emails and it could have been recently, but, and that's where what your message is with athletes parallel so much to um, moms and life, because it is, it's such a a good example of it. But you said something about living a rich life filled with pain and joy, but always loving yourself hard. And that's such, such, so similar to messages I give to my followers as well. And I like that, like going out and living your life as big as you can and, and love yourself through every bit of it, your mistakes, your stumbles, everything. Yeah. Um, so as I wrap it up with you, because I, again, I know how valuable time is and I appreciate it with you. I'm just, I want to ask a little bit more about what you do. Like is, are there certain ages or sports or athletes that you work most with? Well, or most of my focusing now is more on like coaching the coach. So parents and coaches and athletes um, taking it to their kids. I think all of our, tools, like our online courses can be, again, most of them are, I mean, some athletes go through them for sure, but a lot of them are for coaches or athletes or teams. And so, um, but a lot of them can be modified to different ages. Um, I think, you know, again, when you're talking about investing, whether it's a course or training, you know, you definitely want your kids to be at the level where they're going to take it seriously. And a lot of times that as is at a level where they've seen the downside of not having some sort of, you know, proper mindset, if you will. Um, They've kind of hit the wall, so to speak. Um, So a lot of our training is kind of coaching the coach and that, that goes into, um, you know, coaches that are mindset coaches that are building their businesses that goes into people that are influencing people 
mostly like athlete minded people, right? Like lifelong athletes. Um, and also coaches that are coaching mindset. So with that, we have our certification, which is people that want to build mindset coaching businesses or add it onto their existing business. So, you know, people that are coaching or people that are running skill development or people that are training people that want to add in, you know, some sort of mindset coaching to that. And then we have our monthly called the mindset coaching collective, which is our monthly training program for it's for adults. Um, and is that for so, mindset coaches or who, who, who is that? That's for? the same. It's mindset coaches, people that coach mindset, people that okay. really want to grow their mindset. Um, and again, it's, it's more for people that are high performance, um, interested in athletics. We don't necessarily always talk about athletics, but people that have that background, um, generally find our stuff, um, you know, appealing to sort of how they think. Um, but yeah, it's, it's for, it's for anybody that wants to really work on their mindset. So gotcha. that's our monthly coaching program. That um, great. yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's started, I, I always create stuff that I want <laughs> and that's it's like, great. where do you go to work on this stuff? You know, most people DIY it and then they don't have any structure. They don't have any accountability. They don't know what to work on when, and you know, it's the same reason mo- many of us have Peloton is it's not because I don't know what to do. It's right. because I'm going to do it more if I just press play. Um, and that's what we do from a mindset standpoint is we take the guesswork out of it. You don't have to go on YouTube and get, go down the rabbit hole. Like we teach you what to, to work on and there's themes every month. Um, so it makes it really easy for people to implement this and, um, stay accountable to a real mindset training program instead of just like, like you said, like as a mom, especially it's like, where do you carve out time for yourself to work on yourself? If you leave it up to you know, happening sometimes it's never going to happen. Right. Absolutely. So before we wrap it up, what, obviously we've talked a lot about, like you have so many good resources on your website and I just want to make sure they all know. Um, can you tell us your website? Sure. It's positive performance training.com and Lindsay positive perform on Instagram. Lindsay Positive Perform. It did take me um, a minute to find you on there, I feel like, on Instagram. Mm. Lindsay Positive Perform. And are those are your, besides your website, obviously, is your main place. Is there any other besides Instagram that you are? Um, we have a Facebook. I can give you the link for the show notes. We have a Facebook group. Um, it's called Mindset Coaching for Coaches. Um, people interested in implementing mindset coaching um, with themselves and with, you know, people that they lead. Um, and I'm trying to think of what other resources I would point to, you know, I think if, if anybody's interested in moms make great mindset coaches, I have to say, so if anybody's interested in getting certified with us, um, it's a dual certification. We teach how to start a mindset coaching business. And we also have something within that certification. That's the performance visualization specialist. So you learn how to do guided visualizations, which is a really helpful tool. A lot of people use that with their kids. Um, and we open that like once or twice a year. Um, but if you're interested in that or interested in being a mindset coach or think you may be interested in it, um, it's a great side hustle. It's a great career to build up while you have kids at home or, or you're busy with that. Um, and often moms have clients that are sort of right in front of them, whether it's their kids, teammates or a community, you know, club that they can work with. Um, but we have a, a tool and I'll give you the link for it and it should be on our main homepage. Um, but it's called the, um, the ultimate mindset coaching toolkit. So it's basically how to start working with your first client. So um, we give you scripts and, you know, how to, how to really break it down so you can work with your first practice client, I should say, not a paid client necessarily, although you could do that as well, but more like a lot of people are on the sidelines wanting to help, whether that's their kid or someone else. Mm -hmm. And they want to take them through a session versus just talking to them about mindset, actually teaching them, and coaching them and how you actually do that, how you hold space for somebody to grow in an official session. So we break it down with our ultimate mindset coaching toolkit. That Now that's great. That's valuable information. And you said two times a year, your certification opens. Is there a certain time of year that that opens Yeah, it's, well, it's usually once or twice. Um, I think we only opened it once this year. Um, next year, we're going to open it up um, probably in February of 2023. Okay. 
Um, and then our, I don't know when this uh, episode drops, but um, our Mindset Coaching Collective, which is our monthly coaching program, opens in end of October. Okay. And you have a podcast as well, right? Where you, where you do, do interviews and you do, I like just your short blips that you do as well. Oh, yeah. yeah that, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's called the Mindset Coaching Academy. And we have generally like a training uh, session where I talk about one of these concepts in depthly. And then I have an interview with some other mindset coaches or leaders in the space. And then every Monday we have something called Mental Monday. And that's like a short little five to eight minute um, a tool t- technique or tip that you can implement in your life today or this week, which is kind of fun. Um, and that's a nice way to just, again, I, I, I create stuff that I like and I need and having like one little short little thing that you can work on today is, is really helpful. It just keeps you and it, you know, pops onto your phone. So you can just, if you subscribe, then you can just work on that one thing and keep that accountability going. Like a lot that. of stuff isn't rocket science. It's more like the consistency of it. That's exactly yeah, what yeah. I push. I like that message. Consistency mm-hmm. and simple. And that's what it is, is simple, yep. th- simple, small shifts, little by little yep, to, absolutely. to help change things. And um, I just love how your message is so parallel and so um, applicable to moms as well. So yeah. So thank you, Lindsay. I know you have um, a baby somewhere close by probably, <laughs> I do. but I really, I just want to thank you. I could ask you so much more, but I want to be um, aware of the time and let you get back to your life. But thank you for um, giving us your time today. I really enjoyed every bit of information you gave to us. Thanks Kelly so much. I appreciate what you're doing and um, glad that you got a community of moms working on themselves and fitness and in life. It's so important. People have those communities. It really is. It really is. So I appreciate you, you speaking out to them too, because as moms, we all need to know that we're, we're, we're all going through a lot of the same things, even though our lives look very differently. Yeah. And it's so important that they're taking that time to work with you or get some coaching because investing in yourself pays huge dividends and it, it can be just for you, but it's also for the people that you lead and your family. And it's always a good way to spend your time and money, in my opinion. I'm with you on that. I agree. Well, thank you. Thank you. And and, um, I hope we get to talk to you again soon. Thanks, Kelly. Have a great day. Thank you too, Lindsay. Bye. I appreciate you sharing this time with me today. I am grateful you are here. And if you have anyone that you feel could also benefit from this encouragement, please share it with them today. You can also add a quick review on iTunes, which would mean the world to me and help me just to make this better for each and every one of you out there. I will be here each week, so please be sure to subscribe to the podcast or join me at kellyrenato.com to get the latest episode and more tools to help you on your journey to feel your best and enjoy every single day exactly where you are. I would love to have you join my journey and let's all add good, healthy vibes anywhere we can every single day. Enjoy your week and embrace the season you're in. And I look forward to next week. Take care. Bye-bye.